how it started, how it ended up. Want to know what happened? Then stay tuned. Hello everybody and welcome. SpaceX successfully launched another Starship and Super Heavy Booster combination today, June 6, 2024. And wow, what a spectacle it was. Ship 29 and Booster 11 successfully cleared the pad almost perfectly on time, despite one of the 33 Raptor engines failing pretty much right from the start. This is now the fourth time that a fully stacked Starship was launched from SpaceX's test site in Boca Chica, Texas, and at first it almost felt like a routine launch already. But this time there was a lot more that happened compared to the previous flight. If you remember, last time the booster failed during the landing attempt and Starship broke up during an uncontrolled re-entry, despite it looking very spectacular. This time we got to see a lot more. If you also want to see more, make sure you are subscribed to my channel for more videos about spaceflight and also space games like Kerbal Space Program. The hot staging event came and went and Booster 11 initiated its return to the surface while Starship itself continued towards space. Before this flight there was speculation in the space community about SpaceX disposing of the hot staging ring. They acknowledged this on the livestream and said that they are doing this now because the ring was added on later and has a lot of mass that you don't want to have on top of a booster trying to perform a landing burn. Future iterations of Super Heavy will have the hot staging rings integrated, which would be more in line with full reusability than getting rid of a crucial part of the system. We even saw the hot staging ring separating from Booster 11 after the boost back burn. Apparently the Raptor engines on this booster were a bit cursed, because at least one appeared to be exploding when the booster started its landing burn. The telemetry readout showed that one was not active, but that didn't appear to affect the flight too much. SpaceX wanted to simulate that landing the booster on their launch tower arms, so they slowed it down to almost a complete stop before letting it drop into the ocean tail first. This was a significant milestone for them and the first time SpaceX managed to perform this maneuver with this vehicle. Up until now the test flight had went off pretty great despite the engine failures. Now it was time for Starship to prove its metal, or rather its stainless steel metal. During the third flight test Starship was spinning uncontrollably and therefore did not enter the atmosphere with the correct attitude. This time when it came to re-entry, Ship 29 was stable and in the correct orientation. Once again we saw the magnificent plasma buildup around the edges of the ship. It was already breathtaking watching this in the previous flight, but this time we were treated to a real show. The video uplink via SpaceX's Starlink communications network almost never cut out during the entire time, so we were treated to images previously unseen in a live stream ever. Usually there is a communications blackout due to the extreme heat and plasma during re-entry. This time we saw it in all its glory and unforgiving brutality. Because while the flaps worked continuously to keep Starship on a trajectory that prevented it from burning up or bouncing back into space, the heat buildup was too much for at least one of the front flaps. At around T plus 57 minutes the front right flap began to violently disintegrate. It appeared that the heat came through the hinge and ate through the steel ripping parts of it away. Many observers, yours true included, thought that that was it for ship 29. No way that it would be able to survive re-entry on just half a flap and stay controllable. But it just kept going. The camera lens was messed up, but we still got telemetry and we saw that the ship was able to orient itself. SpaceX actually managed to pull off the crazy belly flop maneuver to bleed off speed, then use flaps and engine gimbal to flip the ship upright again and then land it on the ocean's surface. We have seen that before in the previous Starship iterations like SN10. But this time it was a starship that had endured the rigors of re-entry and then was still able to pull that off. The final telemetry readout showed 9 km an hour at 0 meters of altitude before the feed cut out. 
this was just an amazing feat of engineering and Starship displayed incredible resilience, both from its structural integrity as well as its mechanics and software. I mean, look at this comparison. On the left is the flap when it was intact. On the right is the flap after it was ripped apart. The back hinge is gone, heat shield tiles are gone, a lot of its surface area is gone and yet it kept moving. And Starship software is able to compensate for the reduced control surface area. If that doesn't inspire confidence in the durability of this vehicle, I don't know what will. Still, they will need to work on this in order for Starship to really be fully reusable. It just won't do to replace the flaps every time you return from orbit. From what I heard on the livestream, SpaceX is not going to attempt to recover either Booster 11 or Ship 29, which is a shame in my opinion. I would really like to see how much of each of them has survived the splashdown, and I would also like to see how damaged the other flaps were. I can't imagine it was only the one flap that experienced heat damage. So. What can we expect from the next flight of Starship? Do you think that they will already attempt to catch the booster with the tower? Or do you think that they would rather perform another splashdown, maybe without the Raptor engine exploding during that maneuver? I mean, that launch tower was pretty expensive and without them they cannot launch any additional Starship. So let me know in the comments down below what you think about that. Ship 29 didn't have any specific test payload on board, but SpaceX has always said that the payload for these flights is data, and I can imagine that they have gathered quite a lot of that during this approximately hour of flight that Ship 29 and Booster 11 had managed to do. Whatever the data may be, it was magnificent to behold on the livestream, so let's look forward to the next flight. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.